And good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to today's episode of the Law News and Laughter podcast. Uh, it's going to be a little hit and miss this morning, I'm not going to lie. We got the little one home from school sick, who has literally just pushed the door open to say hello, and who knows that she's not supposed to come in here if she's still wearing PJs. What's wrong? Stop there. No, you can't play an Android game on the on Elite Pad tablet, sweetheart. It doesn't work. If you want to play that card game, you need to go and get your phone and I will turn it on for you, okay? But I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? But I don't know where my phone is. What do you mean you don't know where your phone is? You had it last night. What did mummy do with it? Is it on top of your chest of drawers? See what I mean? Anyway, today's going to be, yeah, <laughs> kid appropriate anime shit. Thankfully, she has no idea what the hell this is, so doesn't really matter. Um, and let's face it, we're going to be talking about some non-kid appropriate things, and that's going to have to happen. Yes, Marty, I'm acutely aware that I'm live. <laughs> oh, you do know what I'm talking about, do you? Do you know what my shirt says? Yeah. You know what show it is? Yeah. I can promise you, you have never once seen this show. What is it? What do you think it says? Ah, 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 you know you're not allowed to come in here. Yeah, no, people can't see you if you stop right there. So he's going to have to put a line across the bottom of the... I'm going to have to put a line on the floor so as to where she has to stop. No, 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 not funny, not funny. Stop it. Stop it. If you want, I, like I said before, if you want to be on camera, you have to go and put clothes on, okay? Everyone's already seen you from the, um, from the weekend stream, so I'm not, you know, that cat's out of the bag, but if you want, if you want to show up in the background, then you need to put your regular clothes on, not your PJs, it's not funny. Thank you. What? I don't want people seeing you in your PJs. Have some decency, girl, you're a lady. No, mommy will get mad at me. Go and put go and put some clothes on if you want to come in here. <laughs> what? Okay, stop it. I'm gonna get angry now. <laughs> go and put clothes on. What? Popper. Well, there's one in the cupboard. Go. You can go and drink it if you want. I don't know what you say. What do you mean? What are you saying? <laughs> Now you're just screwing with me. I'm saying Daddy. Mm. Saying your name. That's not my name. That's Papa's name. That's your grandfather's name. What'd you forget about that? Dada. Oi! Get off camera! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Daddy! No, that's not it's not funny. I said no. Daddy. No. Can't find your phone. Did you did you look on the top of the chest of drawers where I told you? And you couldn't find it. You've got a piece of trick stuck to your face. What are you, what are you doing to me here? You... This this may this may have been a bad idea. We saw what you did to that poor defenseless unicorn. She's no lady. <laughs> Remember the cotton candy you had on the weekend? Okay, you know what? I'm just I'm gonna play one of the things from Twitter, and fingers crossed, we'll get stuck back into the show. We need a co-host tonight. Well, I mean, it, I would I would let her co-host if she'd go and put clothes on. I'm not okay with you being here in your sleeping dress. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, what's happening, Eileen, is that I had to turn my camera off because the little one decided she wanted to waltz right in and will not listen to me about going and put, putting regular clothes on. So she's walking around in her PJs because she's homesick. Well, she's supposed to be sick. You don't seem very sick to me. <coughs> Guess maybe I just have to take you to school and in your PJs. <coughs> anyway. <coughs> Sounds really sick like when I didn't want to go to school. Yep. I'm getting trolled hard. Yeah, I know. Pants are present, so I don't blame them. 
course she wants attention. I got no issues with giving her attention. The cough was truly legit. This this has now turned into like one of those audio murder mystery things. Um, actually, uh, Corinth Panther, if you're if at any point you're actually watching this, thank you for reaching out. More than happy to have you on. I will definitely be inviting you to the Pay It Forward stream. Um, I've actually got smaller creators that are reaching out saying that they want to come on the show, which not gonna lie, made me feel a little bit good. So, all right, I'm gonna put a video on. We're gonna go and find your phone, and then you are gonna sit down. And be quiet and play video games on your phone, okay? I want to play Super Mario Brothers on the TV. Because I'm talking to people. I'm live. <laughs> no, you, I, I'm, I, I can't play Mario Kart on, on the... No, me. No, you can play it on the handheld. No. Okay, well, then you're not going to play it at all. I want it on the TV. You want it on the TV? Why do you want? It? Why must it be on the TV? Because it's big, so I can see. Yeah, but you don't like playing Super Mario that much. Half the time, you come and get me and try and get a um. Why can't you just watch the Mario movie? I want to play Mario video game. Yeah, well, you can play Mario video game. You can play the Super Mario. You you can play Mario Kart. You just can't play Super Mario. Because you always die and then you want my help. And I need the next hour or so to myself. No, I want to play Mario Drive. Yeah, Mario Kart. You want Mario Kart on the big screen TV. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, we have a plan, people. Give me a couple of... No, it's not Helldivers 2. Um, give, me, give me, like... It's okay. Angel's allowed to be on camera. You're not. I'm going to play one of the Twitter things and hopefully I'll be back inside the next couple of minutes. So. Angel's in, Daddy. Oh, my. Yeah, is Angel's Angel fine. Is Angel on camera? No, Angel's not on camera. Now no is. What? No, because I've got the camera turned off. Munchkin, there's people that say they want to say hello to you. So they're saying hello from the group, okay? Come here, watch your toes. Do not let your toes get run over by the chair again. Angel. She's all right. Come here and say hello. Hello. Take all the time you need, you're a dad after all. Yeah, but look, it doesn't do great. <laughs> As a dad of a, a tortoise, you're screwed, buddy. Yeah, I know. Oh, Boosh, you wash your mouth out. She is so much better than Darla. Second. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
God damn, you wouldn't think it'd take that long to set up my rear cut. Whew. Defending his homeland from an invading kangaroo. Not quite so much. Um, where are we? Missed opportunity. Should have bet the over-under on returning. No, I was always coming back. It's all good. What? Nana is drunk again? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 2432 Wallaby Way City. Great. Oh, wait. I should probably put the camera back on, shouldn't I? No, don't you start with me. Okay, and we're back. So, she's happily sitting playing Mario Kart, but I can't... Is there a Rue bat like a Rue bar? I don't think so. It was going to make the scene of the crime. Um, so, today is going to be a little hit and miss. We'll see exactly how we do. Uh, thank you to everybody that has sat through the last, wow, 13 minutes of family crap. But... Um, I told her that if she comes back in here, she has to be wearing going out clothes, not her PJs. I give it all a 10 minutes because let's face it, that's, you know, it depends how long it's going to take her. Did you put a mask on her now? No, she's not wearing that. She doesn't actually have to wear the mask anymore. Ever since we did the trip to um, Grey's Land, I don't have such an issue with her being on camera, provided she's appropriately dressed. And I don't understand why that's such a big problem. Free doggo. Oh, that does remind me, people, don't forget, if we get to 50 bucks or 10 memberships, Doggo Cam comes on, which there's a good chance today that will also include Kid Cam. Um, but we'll see exactly how we go. In today's show, we just realized how much of the show I'm actually going to have to clip. So, um, In today's show, we have a man who has been the first person in England charged and jailed for cyber flashing. That's right, people sending a dick pic can now get you jailed. We also have evidence of... <clears throat> Foreign nationals accessing certain arcade machines during a specific time in 2020. Is there a dead rock star buried at Graysland? No, not so much. Uh, we've got some not so nice things. We've got a 14 year old girl that's going to be shackled down and under forced to undergo chemotherapy, despite the fact that uh, her doctor and mother are pleading for her to be allowed to pass with dignity. And. Guy's been charged with a whole bunch of snakes in the back of his car. We're going to have a look at some guys that uh, tried to sell a cop car out from under them. And the Juice Media, which is a satirical comedy... What do you call it? Um, well, they're a satirical comedy group. Let's put it that way. They basically put together these ads that poke fun at the government, at stupid shit. Well, basically, they're being told that they have to censor one of their videos. I'm not okay with this, particularly given that um, Aussies try, try to be professional and shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why I'm trying, peeps. I, I, I have no idea. I, I, ever since we had all those views from the people that dropped in from What the Hails, I've been trying to be on my best, and it, I, I have done nothing but trip over my own feet and fail spectacularly the entire time. Um, but anyway, I digress. Welcome to today's episode of Law News and Laughter, people. Let's get stuck into it, shall we? There's going to be some boomerang. <laughs> I'm still trying to work out why when I press the button on there, that starts when it's not supposed to, and then when it doesn't, it's not supposed to. Yeah, if I press that <laughs> Also, now it works. What the... Anyway. I'm so high right now. Witness for the prosecution says he might fall asleep due to drug use while he's on the stand. Poor kid. Daddy called me a Democrat. I think that's so funny. Um... A witness for the prosecution in the Young Slime Life racketeering trial told the judge that he was so high that he just might fall asleep while testifying in Fulton County in the in the criminal trial on Tuesday. Adrian Bean is one of the people the state have sought to use to establish that the hip-hop recording artist Jeffrey Williams, better known by his stage name Young Thug, 
was at the scene of a drive-by shooting that took place on Donovan Thomas Jr. on September 11, 2013. Bean, however, has not offered particularly illuminating testimony in the case so far because he was high as a kite. You'll, you'll do. I, j I just need about tree fitty because I'm. I, I need to get a hit. I need a hit, brother. If it wasn't boomerang. It wouldn't be a real show. This is true. Now that is definitely a special witness. Yeah. <sighs> Late last month, he explained that his memory of the shooting and concomitant car crash was nil to non-existent because he was frequently on drugs through 2013. Pros prosecutors have alleged that Bean, Thug, and one or two others were involved in the fatal incident. The testimony was he didn't recall six, for six days on the stand. Are you serious? He was just... Oh. Wait, this, go this one guy's been on the stand for six days? And this is the office that's supposed to be prosecuting Trump. Fabulous. Uh, now the forgetful witness is likely to have his reliability, if not his basic presence at the trial, and what it means, questioned again. Man, um, Bean said on Tuesday, oh, hang on, we have audio. Can I get a water from? I'm so high right now, y'all, I'm about to go to sleep on y'all, man. Jesus Christ, how was that not... Tell me the trial was postponed immediately. Does that mean it was high on the law? No. No. That's just that that's just pathetic. Oh my god. Even the judge in that trial is a hot mess. I'm glad I stuck clear of that. If you do want to watch this particular trial, I'm pretty sure Nicholas Starov is um Starrow, damn it. He's covering it. Can I get a water or something? I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to fall asleep on y'all. Now I am. Classy. Why the? Why is he wearing a... Can't let him testify on drugs? Well, apparently. What? An attorney then approached the asked to approach the witness, Fulton County Superior Judge Ural Ur Ur Glanville, Allow the lawyer to bring Bean a bottle of water and then allow the testimony to continue. Why? Why? It is inappropriate, Your Honor. The testimony was broadly a retread of Bean's earlier time on the stand in late February. Then prosecutors sought to establish that in, an immediate, in the immediate aftermath of Thomas's death, Bean, who was arrested that day, told investigators that Thug was a gangbanger and was specifically allied with the Bloods. The Bloods. The state also tried to elicit testimony from its witness that he told a detective Thug ran away from the shooting. Just call him Santa Claus. Might need to. Okay. Don't you know he's just high on life? Oh, God. The end result from all that, however, was more of a question mark than anything, with Bean saying he was more or less addicted to Molly at the time and couldn't recall anything. On Tuesday, Steele again sought to pose questions about the meeting to the self-proclaimed under-the-influence witness. The defense claims Bean... Had the screws put to him by police in an effort to implicate Thug in the drive-by shooting. Audio of the January 23 meeting was played in court for the witness to hear, where he appeared to suggest exactly that. I'm not going to lie on a brother, Bean says in the recording. You know what I mean? He wasn't with us. Young Thug was not in the car with us that day. I don't even know how his name got mentioned. Maybe there was a lot of hype on the in the streets. Time. Sounds like he's still addicted. Depends what he's depends what he's still addicted to this time around. <clears throat> After playing the clip, Steele repeatedly sought to establish that Bean previously told him Thug was not involved in the shooting. Again, Bean offered various iterations of not being able to remember. Williams and five other co-defendants, Shannon S. B. Stillwell, Marquavius K. Oh my god. I'm worried if I read these names out that I'm gonna summon a demon or something. No, we don't know what you mean. Maquavius K. Huey, DeMonte Yakgotti Kendrick, Quayamavius Quay. There's two guys with the same nickname, or the, the, the. You know what? There's five people on trial. They face a long trial after an 86 page RICO indictment was filed against 28 total defendants last spring. Since then, nine defendants have taken plea deals, including Antonio Sledge, Williams's brother, Quantavius. 
Maquavius, Quamavius, Quantavius. <laughs> Is Laquifa in there? <laughs> Ladovian, Quandavian, Aljuanique. Oh, Jesus. I swear to God, I'm not trying to sound racist when I'm talking about this, but I mean... It's it's just that I'm struggling to read them. Hey, Donius. Hey, Denius. Yep. Looking up the names, maybe just a minor demon. Nothing to worry about unless you're sacrificing a goat. <laughs> Sounds like the A.A. Ron Keelan, Key and Peel sketch. <laughs> They're original African names. Okay, fair enough. I, I want to point out I'm not laughing at this because they're African names. I'm laughing at it because, to me, it sounds like someone's gone and tried to make the whole unique-sounding names. Like, I've got another... I've, there's another... Um, news article that I was planning on looking at this morning that was about a mother who's being slammed online for the unique sounding name that she's tried to give her kids. But I mean, there was the poor woman that found out that her husband named their son after a meme. She had no idea. I, I don't know how many of you in chat would have heard of the, uh, I, I only vaguely know about it. Paulson Thunder says they're not African names. Okay. Jason, that's bad. That's bad. I'm not even, I'm not bringing that up. <laughs> Surely all have fannies. Oh, Jesus. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's like you get your faith and your hope and your whatever else. Not Claudia. <laughs> Claudia. I guess it's because when you get people like, hi, I'm Rain. Or it's like, what? Well, why is it so difficult to stick to, st to standard names? Why does everything have to be unique, you know? Um, anyway. Others had their cases separated. The lead defendant is purportedly the leader of the Young Slug Life gang. He is charged with eight violations of Georgia's homegrown RICO statute and, is re and the remaining co-defendants are charged with various other crimes. Since their trials are being held together, however, each defendant had their own legal counsel who has the opportunity to lodge their own complaints and present unique defences, resulting in the glacial pace of courtroom proceedings so far. We saw this in the XXX Tentacion trial. Based dad naming. <laughs> Just saw a list that had Lazel, as in Lazel from Baldur's Gate 3, as a popular name. No shit, really? Huh. This is not a group of kids born to single mums who all that all name the kids after Twilight movie characters. That is fair. Low roll keeps playing my game and bites my tongue. Fair enough. <clears throat> See, this this was the problem that they had in the young drug fog. The, the young fog. The XXX Tentacion. I can't even separate them out for fuck's sake. It was a problem that the <laughs> Listerine and Lysol. <laughs> It was a problem that they had during the Triple X trial. They had the three alleged murderers on the trial. They Each of them had an opportunity to poke holes. They should have been separated, honestly. If those, th if those three had been separated, the trial would have gone far quicker. There would have been less chance of a mistrial because as we've all seen in the opening theme to this show, one of the morons decided to walk right into a... Um... I'm going to get back to that in a second, Mama Soros. Um... One of the guys walked right down the path of something that the judge had specifically said do not talk about, which was that uh, they were in a gang and apparently the shooting was gang related. The judge specifically ruled do not mention that. You know, just just casually trying to cause a mistrial right in the middle of everything. So anyway, Mumasaurus Rex says, Lamau, my son's name is Leo, but his legal name is Leonidas. <laughs> Atta girl. I'll give you some more. That's good. Yeah, not that much applause. Notice there are no juniors. Oh, porcelain, don't be, don't be crass. Don't be crass about that. All right, I need to crack my coke. I need caffeine. It's been a long night. I didn't sleep much last night, and with the little one being sick, it's like, well, and she wouldn't go to bed last night either. She kept coming out. She kept coming into the room and giving me cuddles, saying that she was having bad dreams. I know she hadn't had bad dreams because she hadn't been to sleep yet. It's kind of difficult to have a bad dream when you have closed eyes. 
Oh, anyway. There we go. A man has become the first person in England to be jailed for cyber flashing. He kind of looks like this type too, doesn't he? Nicholas Hawkes, 39, will serve a sentence of 66 weeks after he targeted a woman and a teenage girl with pictures of an exposed penis. How do you know we're live? Penis! Anyone else have flashbacks to the Kim Peel footballer name sketch? Um, no, I always get, whenever I think about naming, it's like the, um, it's the classroom one, where it's just, he's a substitute teacher. Penis. Eh, school doesn't teach anything anymore. Wow. She'll learn more at home today than she would have at school. Well, and this isn't the reason that I'm keeping her home today, specifically. Um, hang on. Where's the notice? Because she was sick and I was just like, I was going to send her and I just, I, I couldn't be. I'm a good dad. I promise I'm a good dad. Le Carpatron Duke Marriott? What the? F uh, where are we? Because today is like, well, today's Harmony Day, but it's also like Cultural Diversity Week. Uh, so today, if she had gone to school, the students were invited to dress in attire that reflected their cultural heritage. And last night, the wife and I were sitting there going, what the fuck do we dress her in? Like, we're, yeah, it's always better to keep her home an extra day. Yeah, look, I would rather keep her home and, and isolate the illness because if she went to school and then spread it around, then we'd be those parents and whatever else. But um, if we'd send her to school, I would have no clue what to dress her in because we're both white Australians. So our cultural heritage is... You know, we've got English, we've got German, we've got whatever else. But we see ourselves as Australian first. My choice and ulti my, my, my ultimate conclusion was she can wear her Barbie outfit with my Australia Day hat. That's what I was going to send her to school in. <laughs> Which I'm sure would have went down brilliantly. Kangaroo outfit with a can of Fosters. Well, she's not British. <laughs> anyway. The 39-year-old from Basildon in Essex pled guilty to two counts of sending a photograph or film of genitals to cause alarm, distress, or humiliation when he appeared in the dock at South End Magistrates Court. That's some interesting language there because it's not only sending the photo or film of genitals, genitals it's, it has to dress up as Crocodile Dundee with plastic shrimp. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Handcuffs on a bull and chain. Yeah, that's too far. I'm, I'm, not putting a, I'm, I'm not putting handcuffs on my daughter. I'm just not. If it happens again, just dress a regular and pretend you forgot it was a special day. Yeah, but then that means she's the only kid in the school uniform and like no more unsolicited peen pics. That's what it boils down to. Because if you send... It, but this is where I think that there is a little bit of a... Um, no use trying to pick one, got too many. Yeah. Could have sent her as Baby Shark, I suppose. The wording in this is is dangerous to me. Now, I can understand the need to curb unsolicited dick pics. Yes. What's up? Did you finish your race? Did you get dressed like I asked you to? No. Yeah, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. It's on the TV. You put stuff in aisles. Yes, it's at the bottom where it says... Oh, oh that's what you, you want to play Minecraft. Yeah. Well, you know how to turn Minecraft on. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much, Vodka Blood, for the 5 Aussie Overlord memberships. 
Uh, congratulations to Bifrons. Been there, done that. Moral printing and beautifully inappropriate in the chat. Hello, how are you doing? Um, where are we? Been a while since I could actually catch you live. Happy to live. Oi! I give up. <laughs> the stream's gonna be fun to see how far Ozzy gets through with his little distractor. Yep. Barbie shirt, pin a big prawn to it, boom, shrimp on the Barbie. We were talking about what you would have worn to school if you'd gone to school today, and someone suggested that we pin a um, shrimp to your shirt and say it was a shrimp on the Barbie. People are freaking out. You need to go and close the umbrella because people are superstitious. No, you need to close it. Not just get it out of the shot. Close it. You, you, you knew how to get it up. So put, put it down. There you go. Now push. There you go. Now, now what? Do you want me to put Minecraft on for you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Is that going to keep you occupied for another hour to 45 minutes? Yes. Are you sh you, you promise? Yes. I haven't even had a super sip on my Coke yet. That's it. That's, that's how little of this show I've gotten through. I love you. You're adorable, but you're annoying the shit out of me right now. <laughs> that's what I am. Oh, that's what you are, is you? Yes. That's what I really do. What, annoy daddy? Yeah. Because I'm a little kid, I'm not that big. Daddy! <laughs> Let's look closely to see Ozzy's hair graying in front of our eyes. It's in the beard. It's all coming through here. And it's freaking me the hell out. Sent you football names if you run out of things. Thank you. I don't think I'm allowed to play it, though. Last time that I um, brought up um, anything from Key Peel, I got struck almost immediately. There are a lot of Australian tourist stuff to s that say, I love Australian loads of flags. It would have been awesome. It's not a bad idea. I mean, we've got D Diversity Week continues next week, so I might just, I don't know, I can, I can send her in something. Put the sword back. <laughs> No, you need to flip it around the other way. Yeah. Yep, now be careful when you hang it. There you go. Now slowly drop it down. Careful, don't break the... F I'm going to go and put Minecraft on. I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs>
And I was muted. Because why not? <laughs> How the hell did I come back to more viewers than when I left? <laughs> okay. She's playing Minecraft. Fingers crossed. We're all good now. Okay. <clears throat> what I was trying to say before is that I can see that this would be able to be abused. I'm not okay with the language that they've used, which is that if you're sending a photograph or film of someone's genitals in order to cause alarm, distress, or humiliation, this could easily be abused because anyone pretty much could say that they were soliciting one or, you know, if they talk over the phone or something or whatever else. What are we talking about again? We're talking about cyber flashing in the UK. And the first guy being, um, she's definitely not inter interrupting you. She's, I guarantee she's going to. That's why I'm trying to get through. All right, guys. Over or under? Do you reckon it'll be over five minutes or less than? <laughs> Give it five minutes. There you go. Um, I mean, the, the, this much like um, protections for making claims of, um, talk about junk mail. Um, much like making claims about, you know, grape and things like that. There do need to be protections in place, but at the same time, I do see that this, this could be used, be able to, uh, this could be abused. Hunter Williams back on the road. No worries. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Okay. <clears throat> The Crown Prosecutor's Service introduced new powers to prosecute crimes, including cyber flashing, sharing deep fake nude images. There you go. So it is now illegal to share a deep fake. And down blouse, down blousing weeks prior. Down blousing absolutely should just be cyber flashing is really a thing. Just turn off the site. No, so AP, what cyber flashing is, it's when, it's basically an unsolicited dick pic. Is pretty much what it is. But again, I do think that, um, that could be abused. In October last year, the Online Safety Act was passed into law, making it a criminal offence to send unsolicited images of genitals. The cases are reviewed by prosecutors based on the impact on the victim, whether they are alarmed, distressed, or humiliated. Well, I wasn't actually upset to receive the dick pic, but I was humiliated that someone felt the need to send me one. They will also consider whether the person sending the photo did so to gain sexual gratis gratification. CPS's Simon Blake previously said, women and girls should be able to go about their lives and daily commutes without being subjected to and bombarded by unwanted sexual images. Our prosecutors are ready and committed to tackling this unacceptable behaviour. We would encourage anyone who's been subjected to the illegal act of cyber flashing to come forward and report it. So what is cyber flashing? It is a form of sexual harassment when someone sends unsolicited sexual or nude images on social media or through tools such as Bluetooth or AirDrop. Alarm, distress, and humiliated are all very subjective terms. Yes, they are. Flashing in the real world is illegal. I observe and report, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, this is a serious crime and we'll work with police to build strong cases against offenders who use technology to harass, distress, or abuse victims for their own pleasure. The Online Safety Act and our accompanying guidance will give prosecutors powerful tools needed to further to go further in safeguarding women and girls against predatory online behaviours. This will allow us to, to send before the courts and bring justice to those who hide behind computer screens and smartphones to carry out their abusive behaviours. Cyber, fla fla cyber flashing. See, I can't even get the word out because it, it's, it sounds so stupid to me. They could have called it something else. Who the F is getting unsolicited dick pics? Um... Women bitching because it's not literally Brad Pitt. X, this happens. Mm. Cyber flashing is a crime that often takes place on public transport. Why are you not just going to do regular flashing on public transport? Have a cup of concrete. Harden the fuck up. Be a man and do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Remember, we do not give specific legal, medical, or general life advice that should be relied upon. Always consult a legal professional as your circumstances may vary. <laughs> <laughs> what about a woman who sends 20 texts a day ticks, 20 texts a day that's my point like everyone's so focused on oh it's blokes that are generally sending dick pics okay fine <laughs> be a man get the trench coat yourself exactly <laughs> um 
uh, where are we? in 2020, data revealed that reports of cyber flashing to the British Transport Police had almost doubled in 12 months. The term reforms to a form of sexual harassment where someone sends unsolicited sexual or nude images on social media or other tools. Cases of cyber flashing when explicit images are sent to someone online without their consent have risen in recent years. 48% of women aged 18 to 24 said that they've received a sexual photo without consent. Drop them out. Let me see it in. <laughs> uh... The issue is even more prevalent for teenagers, according to one study. 76% of girls between the age of 12 and 18 have been sent unwanted nudes of boys and men. That's a problem. Was he on Omegle? I <laughs> wonder if any woman online hasn't seen a D-pic. It's a good point, actually. Can't imagine doing something like that even if asked. If you want a horrific news story, scroll up the page and click on the pet zoo story. The petting zoo story. Oh, no, I saw that. I wasn't gonna call. I wasn't gonna cover that because I um, thought that was a little bit too morbid, and we already have a couple other things. Make them legally change their name to Little Little Dicky. Tension men, you send one out. It's on the internet forever. Just don't. That is true. Back in the day, I just thought it was chat roulette. <laughs> Why are men so eager to show it off? I'm generally curious. Genuine, genuinely curious. Um, there does seem to be something about um. Pride, shall we say? It's the same sort of like when you get a when you've got a sports car or you've got a hot wife or you know you've got annoying ass kids. You want to show them off. You want you want people to. You, it's the Nina Nina factor. You want other people to be jealous of you. If you're sending it to a woman, it's because you think for some reason that she's going to be attracted by your engorged glands. Tip, fellas, they're not. You want to get a woman horny? Send her a copy of your bank statement. Um, where are I? Oh, that's right. I was scrolling up to show the, the... You send one hoping to get one back. No, you set, you, you sent a D-pic hoping you don't get a D-pic back. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the, one of the more dep depressing topics that I, was, that I am forced to cover today because I think it's absolutely ridiculous and it's going to have me ranting and raving. Severely disabled girl 14 will be shackled down and forced to undergo chemotherapy after a landmark court ruling, despite her mother and doctor pleading with the judge to let her die peacefully. Women flash a lot more than men. I have no evidence to back that up whatsoever. So I'm not going to comment on that. That sounded really sleazy. <laughs> All I'm saying is that when we were dating, the wife never once sent me a titty pic. And you know what? I don't think I've even received one since. So. <clears throat> Shackled. I don't know about that. Yeah. A severely disabled 14-year-old girl with development with the development capabilities of a toddler will be shackled down and forced to undergo painful treatment for cancer after a landmark court ruling. The teenager who suffers from de development issues and drug-resistant epilepsy will begin her treatment on Thursday, despite desperate pleas from her family to let her die peacefully. She was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia at a base hospital in rural New South Wales on March 5. Holy shit balls! Anyone sending you women pics is probably a dude. Yeah, no, this is New South Wales. This is the state that's north of me. This is the state where I was born. The hospital, which cannot be identified for privacy reasons, sought an order from the New South Wales Supreme Court to authorise her cancer treatment after her mother asked for her daughter to receive palliative care instead. Why? 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 When you've got, her, when you've got the child's doctor and the mother saying that one particular way to go is better than another, why the fuck... Should the hospital even... Why should they be even contemplating getting involved in this? The court heard the mother wanted to avoid the pain and suffering that her daughter would face while undergoing chemotherapy. Suffering up to 10 seizures per week, the teenager has a developmental age of about 16 or 18 months old. So you've got someone with the mental abilities of a 16, and eight, 16 to 18 month old that is suffering with his, what is likely to be a deadly form of cancer anyway. She undergoes 10 seizures per week 
but you want her to undergo painful chemotherapy against her family's wishes. In what universe do hospital staff, hospital administrative staff, because I guarantee there was no doctor that made a decision on this. This would have been a hospital administrative staff that stuck their nose in. In what universe is it appropriate for them to play God like that? You wouldn't let an animal suffer. Why do they make us? It's a damn good question, Dazzle. Also, Dazzle, you should be happy. I, I managed to fix the notifications in um, Discord. <clears throat> However, she may experience up to six seizures within a single cluster per day. The mother's wishes are not based on any religious or cultural belief, the court heard. No, she just didn't want her mother... She just The mother just did not want her daughter to go through suffering. I personally feel like you could call that a religious belief anyway. If something is is your own personal, moral, or, um, I don't know, ethical belief, why should that not have the same standing as a religious belief? Just because it's something that's been established for thousands of years? Like, I'm sorry, but no. If they're not going to charge those fuckers up in, I think it was in Queensland, that decided that they were going to starve and cause a child to die without providing medical medical um, attention. Why, 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 why? This decision would have definitely been made by a committee, not a group of doctors. Yep. AEDs and anticonvulsants can be a damn thing on the body too. Mm -hmm. Would it have made a legal difference if it was religious or cultural belief? Yes, it actually would have. Because then the, um, the judge would not have been able to have overruled it. They are deprived completely from her love of her daughter and her desire to, to avoid further suffering to an already medically challenged child. Her call for the 14-year-old to not receive cancer treatment is backed by the girl's pediatrician, who told the court that he treated her for a first seizure when she was just 18 weeks old. He said it was likely the teen would need to be shackled down to undergo the cancer treatment, as she has a history of being a difficult patient. She has the abilities of a 16 to 18 month old baby. Of course, she's going to be fucking terrified. And you know, I'm not pressing the button for that one. Because I feel entirely justified in that one. <clears throat> she had previously pulled out two cannulas from her arm and removed a nasogastric tube. The day before her cancer diagnosis, she'd been forcefully held in place for two hours in order to receive a blood transfusion. The pediatrician expressed belief that the girl would not manage the painful procedures associated with chemotherapy. She could also require extremely intensive procedures like bone marrow transplantation. I therefore support and agree with the mother's decision that it is not in the patient's best interest to attempt curative chemotherapy, as I have no doubt that she will not tolerate the intrusive intervention. Despite the doctor's advice and the mother's wishes, Justice Michael Elkame, senior, uh, senior counsel, ruled to allow the hospital to treat the girl's cancer. He admitted the treatment would be difficult, but argued that it does not mean that it should not be undertaken. The judge added that the ruling for the girl to receive palliative care instead would be a death sentence, as she would likely die within four weeks without treatment. You're going to order her to go through invasive chemotherapy treatment that may or may not save her, and she's already within four weeks of death. You are a... Oh, I was going to say something that could have got me in trouble then. Other than just using her as a guinea pig, nothing can justify this? Nope. So here's the thing. I'm Christian. I value life. I see the point in the chemo, but at the same time, how much is too much? I don't know. This is a messed up scenario. No, and look... If it weren't for exactly how aggressive that cancer is and the likelihood that the chemo isn't going to be successful, I would be saying the exact same thing. No, it's fine, Jim. It doesn't matter how it was worded. I get it. What's the hospital's reasoning? Sounds like they just want the money for the treatment. It does feel like a test case. Hang on. Let me do one thing so that I can make sure that I'm not...
Oh, maybe I stand corrected. Sixty-five percent will survive for five years or more after being diagnosed. Has anyone asked the girl is she a functioning function teen making capable of making decisions? No, Grifter wannabe. That's the point. She has the mental abilities of a sixteen to eighteen month old baby. She can't even talk. She's completely reactionary. Not hard to look up, at least in the US. Yeah, no, that's why I just wanted to have a have a quick look. That's not her, by the way. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. That's a different news story. Um, the hospital is set to commence treatment on Thursday today with the matter to return, the court, return to court to monitor the girl's progress on June 14, if she survives that long. Bad decision. I understand why the parents don't want their children to get medical treatment. It will surely make, better, make them better because of religious beliefs. But in this case... Will only cause her more pain. She doesn't understand what's going on, and even the doctor supports palliative care. I also do believe that the leukemia is almost nearly always fatal, and the bone marrow transplants not su as successful as people think. Total marker matches one too few, and you die at less than optimal, and you're on meds for life. Which, to me, given her mental abilities, given the fact that she's got epilepsy, the judge just pissed me off enough that I closed my game. Sorry about that, Leroy. This is an instance where I genuinely believe that people need to stay the fuck out of certain things. Because this wouldn't have, like, on the one hand, the judge has made an ethical decision here based on his own opinions. On the other hand, he is following the guidelines and the rules and the law that he has to. This wouldn't have wound up in front of the judge if the hospital had kept their fucking noses out of the situation. Sounds like Jay Hatch all over again. A little bit, yeah. So. I don't like this. I, I, I very much don't like this. I believe that the child should have been allowed to peacefully pass. Because what, what, what what's what's the upside here? She received six weeks of, of forced chemotherapy, potentially bone marrow transpla transplants, so that she undergoes substantial amounts of pain that she does not understand, that she cannot consent to, that her mother does not want her to have, so that the poor child can have a reasonable period of life left. And as bad as it sounds, like... She's suffering so much and it's not like they're killing her purposely. She's just dying. They're going to be inflicting cruelty on her because she won't understand. Exactly. She doesn't get all the needs she possibly could. Could it be seen as neglect? I wouldn't think so, particularly if... Because as far as I'm concerned, it shouldn't be up to the hospital. Because as bad as it sounds, the... A failure to treat something has already been examined by the courts and they're already there's already precedent here in Australia to say that if you fail to treat something, it's not necessarily child neglect. And if the child passes away as a result of it, it's natural causes. Because as, as horrible as it sounds, that is what leukemia is. What That is what cancer is. It is considered a natural cause because it is a disease that you contract or that develops or grows or whatever else. What would improve the quality of life that she goes through after all, through, if she goes through all of this? Probably nothing. That's just it. If if her, if she is unable to go beyond the current developmental stage, if she's going to continue to have up to six seizures a day, what life does that child have? Is it ethical to maintain the life because it is a life, or is it ethical to allow the child to not be in pain and 
experience seizures on a daily basis. What's what's the better alternative here? Frankly, I don't think there are any good calls, but I do believe the hospital should have stayed the fuck out of it. And because the horrible thing is, because it's been taken to the it's been taken to the court. Out of all of this, the mother's going to have a huge legal bill now as well, having to try and defend this, to to argue her position in court. Let me double check because I'm pretty sure they said that this went to the Supreme Court. New South Wales Supreme Court. Depending on the lawyers involved, depending on whether or not she got a barrister, she could easily be looking at six figures. All to try and save her daughter from experiencing pain. It's fucking bullshit in my opinion. Um, someone asked whether or not I could put up a poll. Yeah, you know, I'm happy to do that. Um, where are we? Hang on, I just do i wait for the chat to load and then I'll put up a poll. Really? I have an 18% SEO score on this stream? Fantastic. Oh, hang on. Maybe I can go... Have I... Oh, I've already got it there. Never mind. Where is it? Poll time. All right. Start a poll. You know, I can't even say who was right in this situation. And I can't say who is looking out for the interests of the little girl. Because in their own way, both of them technically are, I suppose. But at the same time, it's like... On the poll, rainbow ice cream or unicorn ice cream. Boosh, I swear to God. I, I'm not even sure how to phrase this, this question. Like, legitimately. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it the only way that I can think of. Also, don't be like me and be on live chat, not top chat. Okay, well, while that's coming in, I'll um, have a look at the results of that in a minute. But um, Her form of leukemia is a death sentence. That's, that's, that's the problem that I have with it, is that... I mean, look, what I could find was that Cancer research in the UK says 65 out of 10 out of 100 people survive um, for five years, but beyond that, it drops. Statistics further break down to 90% in children, so maybe that's another thing for University of Kansas. I don't know. Oh, I should specify, she's got a 65% rate based on her age. Based on her age, she'll survive for another five years. So. Audio is occasionally sounding a little weird, occasionally dips in sound. Um, I was messing around with the audio settings. It could be because I'm moving the mic around again as well. But um, it could be the noise gate. So just... Um, just bear with me. As someone who's lost four people very close to me to cancer, no. Three turned down chemo at the end when it was explained. Damn. Chemo doesn't always help. Shit, I've lost multiple family members. Fair enough. Okay, well, let's turn from that infuriating article. To duo busted for sex in front of Popeyes. That's right, they caused some people's eyes to pop out while they got it on in the Popeyes car park. A couple was arrested on Saturday afternoon for getting jiggy with it on the sidewalk in front of Popeyes in plain view of passing motorists. 
Responding to a report of lewd behavior, a sheriff's deputy located two suspects trysting on a patch of grass across from the Vero Beach restaurant, which is directly adjacent to US Highway 1. According to the arrest reports, the cops spotted Arnold Mackey, 70, making a thrusting motion while on top of April, 40, April White, who's 44. I'm sorry, what now? How Surely they haven't gotten him for sex because he's 70 years old. Let's face it, there's no way that's... Who hasn't knocked boots in a Popeye's parking lot in the afternoon? Well, I guess I'm going to have to wait until Popeye's opens here. Apparently it's not that far away. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When confronted by Deputy Eric Brashears, Brashears, Around 2 p.m., the duo began adjusting their shorts. McKay, the cop noted, appeared flustered and was unable to fully put, pull his shorts up, with le which left his penis fully exposed to oncoming traffic. <laughs> Claiming she had done nothing wrong, White reportedly struggled with the cop and called him a... <laughs> ...and other obscenities as he sought to restrain her. White, who smelled of alcohol, was escorted to the ground... Escorted to the ground? Oh, see, that made it sound like he made a caused her to be face planted. He actually walked her across the road where the police found empty bottles of vodka and an unopened bottle of rum. A motorist who called 911 also spotted the duo saying he did a double take because he couldn't believe what he was seeing. The witness added that the female had her legs spread apart and the male was inserting his fingers inside her in full view of traffic. After being read his rights, Mackie McKay... Reportedly said that it was not his intention to expose himself and that he'd asked White to leave this, this, to leave the side of the road, but she'd refused. Recognising that he was in plain view of passing motorists, he said he would apologise to the judge. Both White and Mackey were arrested for exposure of sexual organs, a misdemeanour. White was also charged with arrest, resisting arrest and disorderly intoxication. Both remain behind bars, while with White's bond set at 7000 or Mackey needs to post 5000 Escorted is probably the appropriate word for the situation. That's sort of what I was thinking. But I mean, if you're getting paid for it, surely you're going to go to at least a slightly... <laughs> I can't breathe. Bullshit. That's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, Actually, hang on. Let me bring it up. Because it, I saw this and it ag agitated me. And I'll be frank, it's probably going to be a little bit controversial. But I'm not going to play the controversial video for however long. Because let's face it, the number of people that are, you know... I copy the link post. Go to link new page. That'll look. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Because don't get me wrong, congratulations, Robert, you've brought a child into the world. She's 10 months old. You're 80. At a certain point, you need to let the grandkids have their chance to have their own kids. But no matter which way you look at this, this kid's going to be abandoned by her father in the next, let's say, between 8 and 15 years. Because the odds of Robert De Niro living to 100 are slim to nil. This poor kid is not going to have her dad sitting at her 21st. Let's put it that way. What do you think, peeps? Is this appropriate or not? Because it, it pissed me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. How do I want the poll? Wow, we have 96% saying no and 4% saying yes with 26 votes. I will uh, probably close that in the next... I'll give you another minute. Um, I just, I can't fathom this. Kid's never going to know her father. No. So, I, I was really not okay with this. And you'll make it thanks to blood transfusions from the kid. <laughs> That's bad. She'll have her stepdad living off of her dad's money. Look, possibly, but at the same thing. I just, I when I when I first looked at this and I read this and I realised, like, my wife and I are having the conversations now about whether or not we should be having more children given, given our age. And I'm facing the gut-wrenching thought that I may not have any more kids. And this mother f is bringing a child into the world that will never get to know him. The kid's going to be looked after by the nanny anyway. They're going to learn to walk at the same time.
<laughs> so, anyway, I just I just wanted to bring that up so that I could bitch about it. Actually, where's the other thing that I wanted to show, which was the uh, Anna Kasparian losing a, a shit. Hang on, can, how do I enable open that menu? After dismembering it. I don't want to play the video. I want to open the tab. I want to open it in the new tab. Jesus Christ. Just let me freaking open the bookmark. I hate you sometimes, Twitter. Because I don't want to show my other bookmarks. I just want to be able to open this bookmark. Oh, for crying out loud. Dismembering? You know, I don't need the extra thing, so I can just do that. No, I don't want to. Oh my god. A corpse and hiding a corpse after dismembering it. Not bail, not bail eligible. Not a serious crime. I'm not even kidding, guys. Like when Joy Behar outlined that case, I was like, she's crazy. This isn't a thing. This isn't real. This isn't. It's nice to see certain. So, like, th this is obviously Anna Kasparian on the Young Turks. Uh, even Chenk sitting there going, what the hell am I listening to? And to listen to him try and defend the take on this is hilarious. But um, little Ozzy wants a big sister. <laughs> My IV pump just is croaking at me. Am I getting frog juice? I hope not. She didn't drop the F-bomb yet. Oh, no. She says, what the F, which I think is hilarious. But at the same time, listen to this story real so i looked it up it's real guys it's real listen if being on the left means supporting this then i'm not on the left and i'm okay with that so let me give you the details of the case it doesn't mean here we go listen to him chiming in trying to defend it in that okay i don't know let me yeah ap that's sort of where i'm at at the moment Joy the details. On the left. We're all on the left. We don't want people dismembering folks getting released only a couple some of do. lunatic some some do some no. do. I know. I was going to, what I was in the middle of saying is only a couple of lunatic activists yeah. are like, yeah, we're pro dismemberment guys being let go. Okay. <sighs> Hope I didn't miss much. Had to walk out around to calm down a little. Oh, look, only just me bitching about Robert De Niro having a, a daughter at 80. So, no, you didn't, you didn't miss much. <laughs> Anal quail. <laughs> Okay, whatever. You don't represent the left at all. Dismembered at all. bodies. It's so unfair to put them in prison. Okay, let me give you the details of the actual case. Okay. Wait until you frigging hear this, and remember, these people have been released without bail, without any sort of issue. I, I I couldn't get over this myself when I heard this. So four people were arrested in New York after body parts were found in Long Island. Okay, dismembered body parts. The victims were, um, you know, two people from Yonkers, older individuals. Suffolk County police say 44 year old Stephen Brown, 38 year old Jeffrey Mackey, 40 year old Amanda Wallace, and 33 year old Alexis Neves or Nieves uh, were charged with concealment of a corpse. Which, of itself, knowing that you are concealing a dead body should be a felony. I'm pretty sure in most places it is. Like tampering with physical evidence and hindering prosecution. They have not been charged with murder. Prosecutors told a judge there was so much blood in the pipes, in pipes, sink, shower, and toilet of the Railroad Avenue home in Amityville where the suspects were arrested that it was deemed uninhabitable. The place was that full of blood and biohazard material that they had to, yeah, bet they had a nibble, that they actually had to deem it uninhabitable. It is not safe for humans or animals to be around because of how they dismembered the bodies, how they drained the blood, how they'd done all this sort of crap. She's been way too quiet for way too long. Police said they confiscated meat cleavers, butcher knives, flesh, Still not okay hearing that like the third or fourth time around either. Like. And body parts. 
Attorneys for Brown and Mackey admitted admitted that their clients lived in that home where the body parts and all that blood was found, uh, but denied chopping up 59 year old, uh, the 59 year old woman and 53 year old man whose uh, last known address was in Yonkers. Wallace also lived with Brown and Mackey in uh, Amityville police. And look, that might be true, that may be fair. Maybe they didn't know that a pair of bodies had been dismembered and broken down. Come off now, they have to be joking because people are sent to prison without being near the dead people and sentenced for years. Just wait until you hear what the judge ordered. This is what's happening in New York, people. Uh, said that uh, Knives is homeless. Okay, all four pleaded not guilty. The judge released them without bail. They were fitted with GPS monitoring and must report in person for in person probation and surrender their passports. Who the fuck gives a damn whether or not they hand over their passport? They've allegedly murdered two people, drained all their blood to the point where it clogged the pipes. Hey, bosses. <laughs> Collecting social security? Possibly. That may well be what it was, a social security scam. I I don't care about their passports. Dude, I, guys, guys, like what? Okay, so did further research because I just couldn't believe it. Here's more. With 20. Oh, please, you didn't do your own research. What are you kidding me? Don't even, don't even start with me on that. 19 state reforms, mutilation and disposal of murdered corpses are among crimes that are no longer bail eligible. It was actually voted on and passed by the uh, legislature in New York. That you don't have to worry about paying bail on these things. Chopped up bodies and they're released without bail. Yep. Mutilation and disposal of murdered corpses no longer require bail. Or at least they haven't since 2019. Uh, isn't that what everyone does with a dead body? No, look, some people just like transport them, bury them, put a little cross over the top, hold a burial, hold a, it's, it's called a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Give Anna five years and she'll be a conservative. I don't reckon it's going to take that long. I don't reckon it'll be five years, if I'm honest. Not after seeing this shit. Um, and yet another reason why to never set foot in New York. Pretty much what it boils down to, yeah. The DA said the four went to barbaric lengths to cover the crime. What are we doing? What <laughs> you can see, you can see the moment that her brain sort of stops, like it starts misfiring, and she's like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> she willfully lied to, for years to push narratives. Fucker, no, fair enough. Uh, Ozzy did visit the funeral museum, right? That is true, I did do that. Look, she's slowly being red-pilled. That, that may well be the case. As someone that started it, as, as someone like myself, who started out sort of a little bit more left of centre, I'll be perfectly honest. It's funny how being on the internet and engaging with intelligent people actually changes your views on things. I am not going to lie. Um, did they televise this case? Bet not. Um... I don't know my, many of the details. I'm planning on looking into it. If it's like, it doesn't sound like they've been to trial yet because they're out, they're out on bail. Well, they're not out on bail. They've been released on their own recogn recognizance with a GPS tracker. So. What are we doing? What are we doing, Jank? Right. What are we doing? What are we doing? Someone tell me what the F are we doing? Yeah, look. And now he chimes in and tries to justify the left's position on this shit. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. No one signed up for this. I don't know how the hell any of these laws passed. I went to every progressive conference there was over the last 20 years. I never heard a single person saying, why don't we let the actual criminals go? Hey, if someone butchers some That is literally the end result of what is being pushed. Like, the way that things are being progressed, the way that things are going and moving forward in order to make sure that, um, oh, I don't know, certain types of individuals don't face any sort of punishment. <laughs> Doing exactly what she voted for in uh, CA, just in New York. Yeah, wait for it.
someone and, and, and chops them up into little pieces. Let's do the kind of criminal justice reform where they would be able to walk out free. Yeah, come like, at me, come at me right now and tell me I'm the bad guy because I want these people who dismembered corpses and tried to conceal the evidence in prison. Come at me and tell me I'm the bad guy. Come at me. I don't, I, look, I don't, look, guys. Is it wrong that all I want to do is clip that and just have a video of her going, come at me? For the next time we do a kingy corner or something. <laughs> they voted for it, they did it intentionally. Yep. <laughs> insane, you guys are insane. Anyone who thinks this is okay is insane. And everyone else in New York has to suffer the consequences of this with random bag checks at the subway by National Guard troops. Give me a mic, let me talk. Forbidden Ruin, it, 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 all right. I don't know if you're serious or not, but peeps, I'm gonna just say it. If anyone, <laughs> clip it for when you get worked up and need to shout but can't. Not a bad idea. You know, no, fuck it, move on. I was gonna open up the phone lines, but I mean, when I do, generally no one calls through anyway, so. <laughs> the Young Turks Bukaki. <laughs> so yeah. How did these laws pass? You elected these people! Only a couple of activists. Who are these couple of activists and why are they in charge? It's a damn good point. Uh, concept with a state. Uh, state is argued to be more interested in controlling citizens so that they do not oppose the managerial class rather than controlling real criminals. Laws are argued to be enforced only selectively depending on what is perceived to be beneficial for the running elite. There you go. Not enough gauze, tape, and paper bags to come after you, Anna. <laughs> damn. Okay. <clears throat> Why is California replacing suspects' faces with Lego heads? Just in case you didn't quite understand the, th the thumbnail. Uh, the Marietta California Police Department has gained recognition this year for its creative placement of Lego heads over suspects' faces in images taken during arrests and bookings, leaving many Instagram followers wondering why. In a message posted on Monday, the police department explained that on January 1st, a new law restricted how and when law enforcement agencies in California can share photos and mugshots. That to me is a little bit insane. The assembly bill means that aside from very specific circumstances, they can't even share mugshots between police departments. Can someone explain that one to me, please? No way that's a real lineup. It actually legitimately is. Oh, actually, no. It's a, Sorry, when I say it's a lineup, I mean, it's an actual photo that was taken that they've imposed Lego faces over. Um, they've got they've got actual they've got actual mug shots that we're going to look at, though. Police said the images involving the suspects involved in nonviolent crimes are prohibited from being shared, barring specific circumstances, citing Assembly Bill 994 and Penal Code 13665. Surprised Lego hasn't sent a cease and desist. It may well happen. It isn't like they're doing it to protect criminals, Aussie. I couldn't really care less if they're doing it to protect it. Probably because you're in Australia and people don't pay the extra phone charges for their country. Uh, funny thing is, Stargazer, the phone lines are open in America because I use VoIP. The number that gets called, there are two options. You can either call the Australian number or you can call the American number. Either way, uh, in America, it should be the same as a local call. But anyway, doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Uh, in Korea, they cannot show suspects' faces, names, or even handcuffs because innocent until proven guilty. Oh, oh there you go. My mugshot's probably my most flattering photo. <laughs> um, fun fact, the one in the middle has horrible gas. Lovely. Uh, the new law also requires suspects' mugshots post on social media to be removed after 14 days unless special circumstances exist. The police department prides itself in its transparency with the community, but also honours everyone's rights and protections afforded by law, even suspects. The police department added, in order to share what is happening in Morietta, we chose to cover the faces of the suspects uh, to protect their identity while aligning with the new law. Although some commented on the post with complaints that California was spending too much time protecting the rights of criminals, and argues, and others argue that those arrested are innocent until proven guilty, SP Mopar doesn't seem to care about that either way because the Lego faces are way better anyway.
More and more, I wish my chem imbalance would let me get drunk more easily as more and more things make me want to drink. Fair enough. <laughs> Recently, officers were dispatched for a report of a shoplifting which had occurred in the area of Madison Avenue on Marita Hot Springs Road. Officers were flagged down and told that two males each had stolen a shopping cart full of items. Hashtag, that's a lot of stuff, and left the store without paying. The males then loaded their items into a vehicle and attempted to leave the area. Officers were quickly able to locate the fleeing vehicle and conduct a traffic stop on the car. The two males were in the back seat of the vehicle and the car was being driven by a friend. Unfortunately, the friend had a suspended driver's license, which ultimately resulted in the vehicle going to car jail. All occupants of the car were safely detained and removed from the vehicle. Uh, a records check for the two males revealed that they were both on probation for weapons charges and, you guessed it, theft. A search of the vehicle resulted in all of the stolen items from the store, narcotics, paraphernalia and burglary tools, as well as methamphetamine being found. Both males were arrested and booked into the birdhouse on a variety of charges. That's funny. Oh yes, I should take this opportunity to remind everybody, if you haven't already, just uh, reach down and hit that like button, double check whether or not you're still subscribed, YouTube's doing its thing again. I was so close to hitting the 500 mark, and now we're heading back down towards 400 again. Um, they made the one in the foreground a crying bitch. Yep. Um, where are the other ones? I thought there were more... <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta hand it to him it's clever <laughs> but yeah I, I think you're I think you can I, th I think I agree that um, at some point Lego is going to get involved here <laughs> Oh, look, they did Shrek. That's funny. I love the puppy dogs, too. <laughs> nice mug shot. Very nice. <laughs> That's racist. All the suspects were Asian. <laughs> oh, all right. Moving on. <clears throat> Okay. Mona, Australian Art Museum sued over women's only exhibit. This one I was a little bit torn about because some things that I'm going to say are going to get some feminists in a flap. But it more or less extends to everybody that has a, um, shall we say, victimhood mentality. Inside Tasmania's Museum of Old and New Art lies a large emerald draped cube. That's how it appears when you get there. The walls are thick cur silk curtains. Within them, a cascading chandelier hangs over a phallus-shaped velvet couch and a, ch uh, a checkered marble floor. Opulent gold accents everything from the famed framed art on the walls to the furniture. Women are ushered in and offered champagne by male butlers who live to serve. But men are otherwise noticeably absent, turned away at the entrance. Oh no, don't make the, fe don't make the feminists upset. They're going to get their panties in a ball? Probably. <clears throat> this ladies' lounge takes the concept of an old Australian pub and turns it on its head. It was only in 1965 that women won the right to drink in the nation's bars. Previously, they were relegated to dingy side rooms, if admitted at all, and often charged exorbitant prices for a tipple. And so the exhibit, which contains some of the museum's most acclaimed works, from Picasso's to Sidney Nolan's works, were designed as a piece of interactive art, intended to provide a safe place for women to enjoy each other's company while also highlighting the exclusion they faced for decades. What? There's no audio on Rumble, is that right? Tipple means a small drink. <clears throat> uh, artist Kersha Kaleche... Coachella, Coachella, calls it an essential space for the perspective and reset from this strange and disjointed world of male domination. And it's one that could now be taken away by a man. New South Wales resident Jason Lau has complained to the museum 
known as Mona, uh, that they're engaging in illegal discrimination. This week, the accusation culminated in a high-stakes court hearing rife with drama and theatrics. Wait until you hear this. Reparation or discrimination. Frankly, I'm of the opinion that at this point, if it hasn't physically occurred within your lifetime, you need to get the fuck over it. I apply that to British colonization, to Australian history, to American history, to feminism, all of it. If it has not physically affected you, move the fuck on. Because that is not moving towards a better world. Demanding equality or, sorry, demanding equity is not the same as building a better world, shall we say. Call through if I can, might not be as happy as welcoming as you want, though. Uh, maybe save it for another day then, Vodka Blood. A true feminist, not the commie kind, sees men as just as beautiful and necessary as women. Mm -hmm. Can't spell fart without art. Hm. Tuesday started with a large group of women dressed in navy power suits, clad in pearls and wearing red lipstick, marching into the hearing to support Miss Cacelli. Mr. Lau, by contrast, dialed in without fuss via video link. He had visited Mona, the, the, he'd visited the museum, long known for its provocative art, while on a trip to Tasmania in April last year. He said he bought the $35, or £18, $23 in US if you want, ticket expecting access to the whole museum. Exactly. My issue here, so I have several issues with how this is taken. One, terms displayed and delivered. That's one of the fundamental areas of contract law. If you do not have your terms properly displayed and delivered, someone cannot be bound by them. Therefore, in this instance, because he was not told when he was buying a ticket that there was an area of the museum that he was restric restricted from viewing and that was off limits to him, as far as I'm concerned, that's misleading and deceptive conduct. He should not be paying full price for that ticket, nor should he be um, excluded from it. They want, uh, they want equality and the way to do it is by excluding a whole group of people. Yep, pretty much. Wait until you hear the argument for why it was okay, though. Uh, I was quite surprised when I was told that I was not be able to see an, ex an exhibition, the ladies' lounge, he said. Should have been told up front before he purchased the ticket. Representing himself, Mr. Lau argued that it breached the state's Anti-Discrimination Act. Anyone who buys a ticket would expect a fair provision of goods and services in line with the law. The museum agrees the exhibit does indeed discriminate. But it argued that Mr. Lau hasn't missed out on anything. He experienced the artwork exactly as intended. That's the argument. That the part of the the part the the whole point of the artwork is that he be that he and all other males be excluded from it, and therefore it's worked exactly as intended. I call bullshit. Because it specifically said that there are high value pieces of artwork that he should have been entitled to view. Because they don't belong specifically to women. They don't belong specifically to men. If it's an artwork like a Picasso, it's open for humanity. That's the reason that's in a museum, so that it can be enjoyed and e experienced by everybody. I don't care about the discrimination of blocking them out of a specific area. Go for your life, okay? Fine. You want to call that artwork? That's fine. But if that artwork encompasses other people's assets and other people's artwork, then fuck you. Uh, part of the experience is being denied something that is desired, said their counsel, Catherine Scott, according to the local paper to the Mercury. Women have been sidelined from places of power or prestige, and the exhibit was inspired to correct an imbalance which existed at Mona. What imbalance? Oh, says the artist, whose husband owns the museum. It excludes men, and I'd be lying if I didn't find it a little bit titillating, she told the hearing, during, according to the Mercury. As the parties sparred, the museum supporters were somewhat stealing the spotlight. They had periods of complete stillness and silence before moving in some kind of subtle synchronised dance, crossing their legs and resting their hands on their fists, clutching their hearts or peering down their spectacles. One even sat there pointedly flipping through feminist texts and making notes. <clears throat> so discrimination. Yeah. That's a good point. What would have happened if he'd identified as female? Apparently unperturbed, the parties continued arguing. Ultimately, Miss Scott said that Mona has a legal defence. The law as written allows for discrimination if designed to promote equal opportunity for a group of people who are disadvantaged or who have a special need because of a prescribed attribute. That's the exact opposite of what you've done. 
Discrimination against one to promote somebody is not the same as excluding someone from looking at artwork. That's a negative, descript uh, negative discrimination, not positive. This art sounds like an hour of pure hell. Well, they don't want equality, I want revenge. Sorry, they don't want equality, they want revenge. Yeah, pretty much. According to Nine, when asked by Tribunal Deputy President Richard Gruber to explain how the artwork does that, the artist replied, I've taken something that was used to keep women down and I've repurposed it into a triumphant space for them. Which is fine, okay? Men are allowed to have men's only clubs. Oh wait, no we're not! I forgot! It's discriminatory against women for gentlemen's clubs to exist. But like I said, my bigger issue isn't with her art being in this cordoned off area that's only for women, where, you know, uh, the only men are butlers and all that sort of stuff. It's the fact that there are additional artworks in there that the public is prevented from viewing. That's not okay to me. Uh, Mr. Lau argued that the section of the law was designed to prom promote positive discrimination and not negative. He wants the lounge to either be closed or for it to admit men. Alternatively, he says the men should have to pay less for a ticket than the women, something the museum says that it will not consider. Which is bullshit. They're not, they're not able to experience the entirety of the, of the area, then he should only have to pay for, for, for what he can. Uh, after Mr. Gruber reserved his decision for a later date, which is yet to be determined, the museum's posse left in a conspicu as conspicuously as it came, dancing out of the building in a conga line as one woman played Simply Irresistible by Robert Palmer off her iPhone. Grow up and have a little bit of respect for the court system as well. Speaking to the BBC the day after the hearing, the artist says the case has felt like art coming to life. The exhibit was supposed to spark debate, yes, but has the spirit of a harmless practical joke? I disagree. Were they all drinking blood? No, that was because they um, they were all wearing this stark red lipstick and like in their power suits. There's such thing as positive discrimination. Oh yeah, it's called affirmative action. <laughs> I'm going to count to three. There will be no four. Oh, because the, the Hans Gruber quote, quote. Gotcha. That took me a second. <clears throat> it brings up very serious and interesting conversations, but there's also something lighthearted about it. Women delight in it, and most men, I think, enjoy it. They find it funny. I don't find it funny. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> One word, Brunker. Yeah, let's bring him on this. It's not harmless. They're power tripping and liking it. Exactly. Uh, the artist... See, I'm not even giving her airtime here. I'm calling her the artist. A, because, and it's not just because I don't want to pronounce her name again. Says she's amused but not surprised by the men who are genuinely upset, though she hastens to add that Mr. Lau has been pleasant and impressive. I think people might want to villainize him, but he's actually really lovely. What does his case say about the themes that the ladies' lounge evokes, like male entitlement and the patriarchy, though? Well, I think it speaks for itself, she says. Uh, she's indicated she'll fight the case all the way to the Supreme Court if needed, but she says, ironically, that perhaps nothing could drive the point of the artwork home more than having to shut it down. If you're just looking at it from an aesthetic standpoint, being forced to close would be pretty powerful. Hello? What? I know it's not mummy. Mummy's still at work. What are you doing? Why are you still in your PJs? I said if you were coming back in here, you had to be dressed. Yes? What, you finished playing Mario Kart? Oh, you finished playing Minecraft. Okay, well, how about you watch something on TV then? Remember, if you want that bonus sticker today, you've got to be really good. Stop there. Yeah. Okay, well, how about you watch Winx or something? So? Watch it again. You can't have watched everything on Netflix. Fifteen more minis. Oh, I don't know. You find something to do for fifteen minis. Go and watch your phone. Go and, go and play Minecraft again. Play Mario Kart. Watch something on the TV. I don't care. Find something for fifteen minis, and then we'll spend some time together. Okay. It's either that, or go and put clothes on, and you can come in here. Mm -hmm. oh, you see what I'm doing on your phone? Let 
Maybe you just want to play Indeed. it. Tell her to watch Bluey. Oh, why don't you draw Chad a beautiful picture? Bluey? Yeah, I want to. I want to play it. Hmm. <gasps> Ice cream. Alright, let's have a look. So, here, so that I can see. Well, no, here, so that you can. So that everyone else can see. So, did you say you want the ice cream one? So yeah. That, so, that one? Yeah. That one. And then. Ice. They have that one. Wait, but the Osho, can we point another one out? Like one more? Mm hmm. A blue picture. Okay, what other one do you want? Hmm, I want that one with stars. That one with stars? Yeah. That one? Yeah. Just print image. Open image in new tab. And print. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have to go and grab that out of the um, printer for him. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> We're back. Uh, <laughs> can hear me. Whoops. Oh, well. Uh, she can always get mummy's makeup again. No, we had that conversation yesterday because she wanted to wear makeup and we said not until the weekend. So, um, okay. What else did I have? How Midwesterners approach roundabouts. <laughs> uh, so we had the bar workers. We had stealing the cats. Dog helper. Man accidentally shoots himself. Oh, Texas high school teacher, 24, accused of having beep with up to 12 boys after buying them vapes and booze, is arrested after her own mother turns her into police. Jaden Charles, 24, a former high school teacher in Agula, Agua, Agua Dolce, Agua Dolce, Texas, was arrested on Tuesday. A Texas high school teacher has been accused of purchasing vapes and alcohol for underage boys before she had beep with them. Jaden Charles, 24, was arrested on Tuesday morning and charged with two counts of grooming and two counts of aggravated essay of a child. A parent of one of the high school students reported Charles to the police and said that her son was seen leaving the campus with the teacher without authorization. Wait, what? Not for her, for you. Yeah, I know, I know. I know what you meant, Pawson.
Uh, where are we? City Marshal Joe Martinez said that Charles, a mother of four, was turned into the office by her own mother. Uh, Charles has since resigned from her position, and Martinez said that so far, four students have come forward, but a total of 12 victims are believed to be involved. I can see why she had to buy alcohol and vapes in order to get them to boink her. Just saying. Usually at 9.30 on a Tuesday morning, 25-year-old Jaden Charles would be teaching her science students at Awa Dulce High School. Yeah. He's a science teacher! <laughs> now today class we're going to work on chemistry <laughs> have anything to say at all miss charles but instead of teaching on this morning she walked out of the awa dulce city marshal's office in handcuffs charged with awa dulce but oh how did i miss the biology joke oh man with two counts of aggravated sexual assault of a child. That after Marshall say they began investigating a vaping case at the high school. Marshall Joe Martinez says one thing led to another and that's when the sexual assault accusations from 2022 surfaced against the teacher. Miss Charles, nothing to say? At this point in time in our investigation, we have four uh, students that have come forward and we have obtained the warrants. We still have probably seven more to interview. The city marshals then drove Charles to Alice so police could hand her two more charges, this time for grooming. Each felony charge carries a two to 10 year prison sentence. We do have parents that were concerned that made some calls about their, their children being with a teacher. Uh, we do have video of the teacher with a student at one of the hotels. Awa Dulce City Marshal Joe Martinez believes this is an airtight case. Investigators believe that up to a dozen- Dude, if she sat on any of those kids, it'd be an airtight case. Jesus Christ. Dozen male Crazy. students could have been victims of Jaden Charles. While she resigned from her teaching job at the high Jayden, school, still she's say. still a mother of four children and now facing years behind bars if convicted. Michael Gibson, 3 News. Bloody hell. She identifies as a map. <laughs> on the wall. Uh, I think they're gonna, we're going to add several more charges, Martinez said, adding that he believed the case is airtight. The Alice Police Department charged it with grooming, as well as the aggravated SA charges. I, I think this is hilarious that it was a... It, it came about because of another investigation. Because she'd given these kids... She had given these kids vapes. And so they were looking into it, and one of the kids ratted her out, presumably. And then her mother's thrown her under the bus for having sex with the kids. Holy crap. She was very encouraging. She always told her students, you can do it. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Um, <clears throat> City marshals reportedly brought the boys, said, said that she reportedly bought the boys vapes, got them intoxicated and had intercourse with them. Martinez said that the Charles allegedly started purchasing the vapes for the boys two years ago before she started teaching. He said that she also allegedly had relations with two students prior to being employed at the independent, in the independent school district. The chief said that there is proof of her being with the students. Well, it should be over fairly quickly then. Should be it. Well, I mean, of course it was going to be over fairly quickly. They're like kids, but that's bad joke. Not where I intended to go with that. <laughs> oh my God. We do have parents that were concerned and made calls about their children being with a teacher. We do have video of the teacher with a student at one of the hotels. Martinez said that police plan on interviewing more potential victims. She graduated from Texas A&M in 2021 with a Bachelor of Science degree, the same year she's accused of starting inappropriate relations with minors. The former teacher has been booked into the Jim Wells County Jail on a $200,000 bond. Are you going to come today, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, I'm going to come. Um, and this is rum, this is Coca-Cola, this is what happens when you combine them. Chemistry. <laughs> Seriously, though, think of it this way. A teacher who, let's face it, she's 25. How old were the kids? Teaching chemistry, so it could be... Let's say the kids are anywhere between, say, 14 and 17, because we don't know. She's terribly unattractive. Yeah, that's, that's part of the thing. 
She got a $200,000 bail. And yet the four motherfuckers up in New York that decided to dismember and bleed out a corpse twice are out on their own bail. Like they're out on their own recognizance. Tell me you live in a red state compared to a blue state. 25, she doesn't look a day over 42. <laughs> Leave her alone. She was the best sex ed teacher she could be. Oh, no. <sighs> her head is pretty round. There's a joke there somewhere. Hang on, I can do this. I can do this. She had all around good head. <laughs> she didn't have sex with the corpse. This is true. Well, they didn't have sex with the corpse. Got you. If she put on a few pounds, Drex would. Oh, Gimba, that's not nice. She doesn't look too worried. I don't think she cares, if I'm honest. So. <sighs> but anyway. Um. Shit, where is... Oh, I don't actually have a thing for it. Oh, well. Is she got me stoned and drunk? <laughs> Boosh says, if she got him stoned and drunk, he probably would. Fair enough. Instead of an apple, you bring the teacher a eggplant. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, all right. <laughs> Great bowling ball. Maybe. Um... Juice Media has been told to censor satirical videos with the image of the Tasmanian Premier or face heavy fines. So this is this is the sort of Visit thing that Juice Media Tasmania, does. Tasmania, land of wilderness and home to countless vanishing wonders, affordable rents, year 12 completions, the Swift Parrot, and of course, liberal governments. That's right. After being driven off the mainland for being utter bastards in every other state and territory, Tasmania is a refuge to the last liberal government in Australia, which is why you kind of get the idea. Those are the kinds of videos that the Jews put out. It was a real what the fuck moment. Uh, Giordano Nani says about his company, the Juice Media, being told to censor an image of Tasmanian Premier Jeremy Rockliffe or face heavy fines. The Juice Media is well known for its satirical, honest government series, which takes pot shots at all sides of politics in videos that resemble government funded propaganda. I should point out that a lot of their ads actually look like the government ads. Like it's not, it's not even a joke. They've got the same styling, the same like voice overtones. Um, in its latest offering in the lead up to this weekend's state election, uh, it refers to Tasmania as the land of the wilderness of home and the home of countless vanishing wonders, including affordable rents, year 12 completion, the swift parrot, and of course, the liberal, gov liberal government, which is our conservative party, ironically. We've left no corner of this land unfucked, the video says, attacking poverty, literacy, ho and homelessness levels, as well as issues in the health system, abuse in the youth justice system, salmon farming, logging, the decision to build an AFL stadium, and more. Labor is almost as good as us as selling out Tassie, the video says. But it was not the liberal use of expletives, the pointed barbs, or the political commentary that the Tasmania Electoral Commission took issue with. Oh, no shit. It wasn't... It. The juice does not control, control Australian media. <laughs> so it was actually the Electoral Commission that had an issue. It was the brief appearance of an image of Rockcliffe used without the Premier's permission. The commission said it had received a complaint about the video and that under section 196 of the Tasmanian Electoral Act, it is an offence to publish on the internet an advertisement that contains the photograph or likeness of a candidate in the election without their written consent. That is true. The penalty for publishing the candidate's picture after the election writs are issued is a fine of up to 300 penalty units or $58,500 or up to a year in prison or both. The Electoral Commission is of the view that the video is likely as is, is likely an advertisement and therefore requires either Mr. Rockcliffe's photo to be removed or the video to be taken down as soon as possible to ensure compliance with the, with the legislation. Damn good thing I didn't play any more of that video. Just saying. Juice Media decided to blur out Rockcliffe's face whenever it appears for approximately one second in the video. Oh, never mind. Just think Tassie's well known for family fun. I know, right? For anyone that doesn't know, Tasmania is our like backwater Alabama. Like, we make fun of them for having two heads and kissing cousins down there. 
Seriously, we were surprised that Tasmania has such a crazy law that can be weaponized to silence critics. Well, it's not really about that. I mean, yes, they're using it in an insane way to twist it around, but I would let that reporter buy me vapes and get me drunk. <laughs> uh, there is no exception for satire, and it shits all over our implied freedom of political commentary. Is it even constitutional? That's a damn good question. Take it to court and find out. I would be interested to cover that. Penalty units. How many penalty units for murder, death, kill, and fighting on the right side of the burger, in the burger wars? Uh, penalty units are only applied as, in terms of monetary terms. So penalty units are if you get a fine, if you... No, for the most part, it's just if you get fines. Uh, current penalty units are... Because um, that way they don't have to re-up... Basically, the way that they've done it is very lazy. What they've said is, here's a, f here's a crime you commit. You either get this many years in prison or you face this many penalty units. Now, in order to make sure that the penalty units are able to be indexed or changed to keep up with the economy, they change the penalty unit every year, and then the legislation just refers to this is however many times whatever the current penalty unit is. So they don't have to keep redrafting the legislation and making alter alterations and all that sort of stuff. Uh, a current penalty unit is... Where are we? the Victorian penalty unit currently? Current Victorian penalty unit is $192.31. And that's current through till June 2024. So. Uh, they should have censored it with a caricature of him. That would have been funny. Uh, all right, where are we? It's got, it's nothing against the commission, but it is a shitty law. Hopefully this draws attention to that and it gets amended or dealt with so that it can be, it cannot be used in this way. Nanny said that the law obviously served an important purpose to stop people deceiving voters, but that it was antiquated and should, should not apply to satire. Under the Hari Clark system, Tasmanians do not get how to vote cards from parties directing their preferences. Richard Hur, the former parliamentary practice and uh, procedure course director of the University of Tasmania's law school, said the system is not a party representation system, it's individual candidates against each other. I call bullshit. Can you sell penalty units on the open market? God, I wish. That'd be funny. Uh, that means a party can't order the ticket in a way that it would like. The voters do that. The legislation reinforces the notion that the voters pre it's the voters' preference, not the party. That is bullshit. You cannot tell me for a second that people aren't just going to walk into the voting booth and say, okay, I want this party in power. I'm going to vote for these guys. I know that these guys are the last people that I want. You're full of shit. Do not come on my cut cake and tell me that it's icing, okay? That's bullshit. Publishing someone's image without their permission it can then effectively be seen as directing someone towards or away from voting for them. The Juice Media describes it as it, itself as 98.9% .9 genuine satire covering government shit fuckery and the most pressing issues of our time. It is absolutely independent and funded by subscribers from Patreon, Nanny said. Tasmania's Electoral Commission, Andrew Hawkey, conceded that the legislation is quite old and that it related to Tasmania's unique system. It obviously got broadened out in the internet and these sections were written well before social media and the internet were actually created, so it's, much more com it's a much more complicated environment in the social media era. There have been a plethora of ads that have breached the law that have been taken down when requested. Ew, what kind of cupcakes have you been eating? No, I'm just saying don't do it. I'm not saying that I've been eating cupcakes. Um, and then I think the last thing I was going to talk about today was... Oh yeah, we were going to go back to the pussies. That's right. forgot about that. Oh no, hang on. We've got to talk about this one. Hardworking Aussie dad is honoured after dying from a snake bite while removing it from a childcare centre, saving children's lives. A hardworking Aussie dad who died after he was bitten by a brown snake while trying to remove the creature from a childcare centre in northern Queensland has been honoured for his bravery. Paramedics were called to a home in Derrigan in Townsville at about 3pm on Tuesday after Jeremy Brooks, 47, suffered multiple bites to his left arm. Mr Brooks, who went into cardiac arrest before paramedics arrived, was taken to hospital in a critical condition where he later died. It is understood Mr. Brooks, Brooks was removing the snake, which is believed to be an Eastern Brown, from a childcare centre after being called there by a relative. He was not a qualified snake handler or remover. The community is now coming together to support the family of the hardworking dad. Hey all, let's honour Jeremy Brooks, who tragically died on Tuesday from a snake bite at a childcare centre in Townsville. 
Realistically, the brave man possibly saved children's lives by removing it. This man is our hero. Let's help the family who have just lost their hero. You can't put a price tag on life, but let's bind together as one. A thousand from us. Let's rally. After being bitten, but before he suffered symptoms, he managed to drive home to tell his wife with the snake still in a bag. Why would you not go immediately to the hospital? Queensland Ambulance Services Acting Director of the Townsville District, Paula Martin, said Mr. Brooks' wife desperately tried to save his life. She performed CPR until paramedics arrived when he fell unconscious after she had tried to stem the flow of blood by bandaging his arm. She immediately immobilised the limb and applied compression bandages. Then the symptoms presented, and that's when the wife tried, uh, contacted Triple Zero. Ms. Martin said Ms. Brooks had absolutely responded appropriately. If you're not aware of snakes, then treat them as if they are all venomous. Contact Triple O and apply basic first aid measures. Mr. Brooks was a father of three, a grandfather, and the owner of a local aquarium maintenance business, who neighbours described as a lovely man. Fucking snakes. A study by the University of Melbourne found that 23 of 35 snake bite deaths in Australia between 20, 20, uh, 2000 and 2016 were caused by brown snakes. Most people who die from snake bites in Australia are male and are bitten in the warmer months of the year. The Eastern Brown is a medium-sized snake with a slender to moderate build and a smallish head. They are known to prefer woodlands, scrublands, and savannah grasslands and are common throughout Australia's east and southeast. Eastern Browns are most active in spring and autumn. Which is why we've got to be careful walking to and from school. Jeremy, from one dad to another who hopefully would have done the exact same thing in your situation. May you rest in peace and hopefully your family's looked after. Cheers to you, buddy. God damn, I hate snakes. I hate them. All right. We're going to finish up on this one. Armed intruders break into an East Haven home leak looking to steal an expensive cat. East Haven police are searching for two suspects who broke into a home and attempted to steal a cat on Sunday afternoon. Officers responded to the home on Thompson Street at around 3.45pm after receiving a 911 call from a resident who reported a home invasion had just taken place. The victim told police two males tried to get through their rear slider door as they attempted to keep the suspects out. One kicked through the glass. Once inside, the suspect pulled out guns and, dem and demanded the resident's high dollar value cat. The suspect searched the home for the cat for... <laughs> For several minutes before a resident fought them off and the pair took off in a blue BMW without ever finding the cat. Detectives were able to track the BMW to nearby Hamden where the vehicle was seized and processed for evidence. Investigators determined that it was not a random incident but a targeted attack between people who know each other. They said they are following several leads and the incident remains under investigation. When the pussy's just that good you gotta break into a house and steal it. again uh, that's the level of hero stuff Sweet. All right. guess I really wanted the pussy yep obviously they've never, never tried to cat catch a cat before no absolutely not because obviously you would spend longer than seven minutes trying to look for a cat oh hell what the hell we'll do one more I, I, I just want to try and like and to raise spirits a little bit. Not that I think this is going to do it. Uh, check Discord for some AI amusement. Excellent. Thank you. That's always helpful. Um, I'm assuming that'll be cute stuff. <laughs> always lovely. <laughs> Two bar workers in Russia have become the first people charged under the anti-LGBTQ plus law. A Russian court has ordered two bar workers to be placed in custody, accusing them of roles in an extremist organization under new legislation criminalizing the community. It was the first criminal case of its kind since Russia banned the so-called international LGBT movement in November. The court chose a preventative measure for the art director and administrator of the Poe's Bar, uh, the tribunal said. They will remain in custody until 18 May uh, and could face up to 10 years in prison if convicted, according to the court. The tribunal earlier accused the two suspects of promoting non-traditional sexual relations amongst the visitors of the bar. Law enforcement raided it in March, and videos of humiliating detentions of some of the bar's visitors circulated online. 
The accused, people of non-traditional orientation, acted in premeditation with a group of other people who also support the views and activities of the International Public Association LGBT. Okay. Dog thefts make more sense. Cats are mean. Fair. Uh, Russia has publicly put out a vague description of what it calls the international LGBT movement, paving the way for the prosecution of anyone protecting LGBTQ plus rights or simply identifying with the community. The director of the League of Safe Internet, Ekaterina Mizzolina, a figurehead of the ultra-traditional faction pushing for repressive laws, hailed the criminal proceedings. This is the first criminal case in Russia after the decision of the Supreme Court to recognize LGBT as an extremist movement. She said local activists had told the police about the club. Amnesty International said what LGBTQ persons and human rights activists have feared since the end of the last year has come to pass. In 2013, Russian lawmakers banned people from promoting non-traditional relations to children. So they should. Just... And pressure on, local, on liberal corner society has since grown. The Kremlin has further ramped up conservative rhetoric since launching its military assault on the Ukraine, casting the conflict as a battle against the West and its liberal values. Let me try a little bit harder. In December 22, Putin widened the 2013 law to criminalize any public positive mention of LGBTQ plus people or relationships. That's pretty totalitarian. Uh, in July last year, lawmakers then banned medical intervention and administrative procedures that allowed people to change their gender. In November, the Supreme Court passed the LGBT movement ban under which there's so far been several administrative procedure, proceedings resulting in fines and short detentions. Notice how they call them administrative proceedings rather than, you know, court hearings or trials. Amnesty said the international community must call on Russia on Russian authorities to remove the homophobic Supreme Court ruling and immediately stop persecution of LGBTI persons. I'm assuming the I stands for inclusive. I, I, I don't know anymore. Oh, look, a place where MTG and Trump would feel safe. Oh, Jesus. Russia's pretty serious about not messing with kids. Well, I'm generally so, I'm generally pretty serious about people not messing with kids. I've, I've said it the whole time. Provided you're over the age of 18, everyone else is over the age of 18, you can do whatever the hell you want. Just leave the kids alone. Just leave kids out of it. It's really that fucking simple. So, anyway. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Oh, uh, someone asked what the rest of the shirt looked like. It's one that I picked up at uh, Matsuri. So um, anyway, as always, please remember, you're not a piece of shit. You have value and you do contribute to society. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everybody that's hit the like button. If you're curious, maybe go watch another one of my videos. Maybe share this out. Hell, feel free to send me a story either on Discord, Twitter, well, X, however you want to call it. But um, as always, stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. And I'll catch you all on the flip side. Cheers, peeps. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out No thanks Don't mind me I'ma just grab my stuff and leave Excuse me, please Fuck this shit, I'm out No nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out All right then I don't know what the fuck just happened But I don't really care I'ma get the fuck up out of here Fuck this shit, I'm out